Final quarter at Prince's Park between Hawthorne and Essendon. Only six points separate the teams, and Hawthorne have the advantage of the one straight kick. The whistle sounds, a free kick going to Don Scott of Hawthorne to put Hawthorne into attack in the very few uh, first few seconds of the final quarter. It floats down. Henry got the hands of it on two occasions, didn't hold the mark. It's been forced out and forced out once again to Goss. Goss now the chance to have the shot for goal. Can't get the way he did go. Eventually got the clean kick in. And Moncrief into the back of Crow with the mark to Max Crow of Essendon. He comes across goal. Dangerous football looking for Hurd. Either take the mark. It's tucked there. Got a hand pass out to Matthews. Matthews in trouble at centre half forward. Tried to force his way through. It's eventually forced out, forced out to Hurd. Hurd tapped it over to Mansfield. Mansfield goes down under the weight of Matthews. And a push in the back will be paid to Ken Mansfield of Essendon. He looks around for the short pass. Sees Van der Haar lead. And Van der Haar takes the mark. But he's still in the centre of the Prince's Park Oval. Paul Van der Haar. The high kick, but it'll be an awkward one for anyone to mark. It's through Danaher's hands. Calvin Moore couldn't uh, take possession of the ball. Players desperately trying to win it. And Calvin Moore comes out from underneath the pack. Umpire Peter Cameron indicating a bounce. They've had a very, very close contest all day. Madden it is who gets the knock. It's taken by D. Peter Menica. He tries to burst through. Day's kick goes straight up in the air and down again. Hawker's coming across. Knocked forward by Wilton. Tuck forces the ball forward again. Manane comes through and Manane showing a good turn of speed. Drives a long kick down over the half forward line. It's O'Halloran and Terry Danaher hanging onto each other. And not Terry Danaher, Neil Danaher. He's still going. Throws the ball out and then is held by Goss. But now he wins out and he'll get the free kick. Well, he did it well. He always kept the ball in front of him, Bob. He goes into Hurd at the half back position. Bennett should move away to take the hand pass. A bit slow to think about it. And now it's Hurd from the centre of the ground, kicking up toward Vanderhaar. Can't take the mark. The man to take the mark is Nick Wilton of Hawthorne. Hawthorne holding Essendon out. He goes for a hand pass over and it's been taken away here by Rodney Ede, showing a fair amount of pace in front of Vanderhaar. Goes downfield and do, uh, kicks down toward Henry. I thought he may have been paid the mark. Throw a bit slow to get a hand pass working. Bennett got a hand pass out and it's Marsh with a short pass to Vanderhaar. And Vanderhaar, 60 metres out, will go back and put the big kick in. And it is a big kick from Vanderhaar. Run up towards the goal square. Kelvin Moore coming across. Madden almost took the mark. Day comes through. Has the shot at goal. A beautiful shot by Day. A good piece of roving from that, that when we saw Madden almost take the mark. And Day comes across to kick his first goal. Well, we don't have to tell you that scores are level at Prince's Park. 13-8 Hawthorne, 13-8 Essendon. We've only been playing three minutes of the final term. And as Bob Skilton said, a very fine piece of roving by Barry Day to bring up that goal for the Bombers who level the scores here. The Essendon runner out offering congratulations to Barry Day on that fine piece of work. We're back in the centre with umpire Graham Marcy. His co-umpire being Peter uh, Cameron. But it's Hawthorne. Can Walton get it away? Wilton, I'm sorry, got a small kick in, but straight to Peter Keenan. Keenan from the centre of the ground. Taking a bit of time. Favouring the drop punt, he puts it wide. Robbins coming across. Two attempts and takes the mark. Stephen Robbins dropping down from the centre. The left foot kick of Robbins, usually a long one, and this is no exception as it's run up towards the goal square. Moore and Madden. Madden knocks the ball out. Day goes in after it once more. Day, ball just at the vital moment. He's still playing the ball there. Matthews coming in, throws himself at the ball. Deep in a minute, go remonstrating to the umpire. But uh, we'll see... Uh, Lee Matthews there also having a talk to umpire Marcy, but we'll find the bounce. There's the bounce taking place. Only a few metres out from Essendon's goal. Taken by Tuck. Kick downfield. Bennett can't take the mark. He was beaten for possession, and we see Manane come away after the hand pass. He kicks down toward the half-forward zone. Goss is there, can't take the mark. Henry's trying to pick up, can't do so. He eventually did pick up, but his hand pass was ineffective. Muir got a hand pass back to Folds. Folds should hand pass on, but he elected to go the kick. He should have hand passed. His kick straight toward Tuck. Tuck can't pick up. In goes Hawker. He was hit too high, and he will take the free kick for the, for the Essendon side. A short pass to centre-half forward, and the mark not taken. Good play by Scott. Scott getting in there on the sea to do the spoiling. But it was been picked up by Bennett once again. Into the forward pocket. And Robbins by himself. And Robbins takes the mark. Hawthorne looking a little bit uh, flustered at this stage of the game. But it's very early in the quarter. We haven't played five minutes yet. And now we see Robbins going for this shot to try and put Essendon in front. Hasn't yet kicked the goal. Robbins going goalward. It's good. There's no doubt about that, Jack. From the moment it left the boot, it was uh, right through. We're in for a great final quarter here, of that I'm sure. Essendon, one goal in front, five minutes into the final turn. 
Or can they keep going, or can Hawthorne come back? Well, the next Robins 25 minutes, Bob will tell us that. Robbins was shifted out of the centre with three-quarter time, Jack, and it's a move that's already paid off because he's taken two marks and uh, they kicked the goal with Hawthorne uh, now trailing by one goal to Essendon. Don Scott up high, got the knock, knocks it on again, but it goes to Mansfield of Essendon. Mansfield hooks the ball out towards the centre wing. Reed from behind is knocked down by Kevin Ablett, taken by Hurd. Hurd goes for the short pass, and once again, Robbins, Robbins takes the mark. Deep here to Medico. I think he conned him into he that. Conned him completely, Jack, <laughs> showing him the ball, and really brought Deep here to Medico in. And now Robbins, within kicking distance, could kick his second goal in a matter of moments. Oh, it's on its way now. Not far away, but it's just going to swing, is it? No, the wrong side of the post. By gee, it wasn't far away, so a very good attempt there by Stephen Roberts in the space of a minute to have those two shots and bring up 1-1. Naturally, he would have liked the two goals, but well, seven points now that Essendon lead by. Very handy lead. Kelvin Moore to the outer side, a good kick too. Go doing the roving, it didn't come to him though. Well played, Fletcher, picks up. Had a chance to go for the short one into Marsh. He went further upfield looking for a teammate. Couldn't find, a, well, he did find Dan Herbert. He couldn't do anything with it. And we'll see if there'll be a free kick going Hawthorne's way. It is so. Looks like big Bernie Jones. Oh, it's John Kennedy. He's not as awkward as Bernie Jones. He kicks down to the centre wing position and a mark taken by uh, big Peter Keenan. And he hasn't done a great deal today, though. There's a hand pass by Folds to Crow. And Essendon come forward again. A kick. Awkward bounce from Madden. Taken away from Calvin Moore by his teammate in deep field, Domenico. The long hand pass goes towards Calvin Moore, but it's intercepted well by done. Marsh. Showing tremendous courage, he goes for the short pass, and Robbins once again. Gee, that was beautiful work by Marsh, Bob. A great piece of play, Jack. He showed tremendous courage, if, not anything, if nothing else, apart from the skill. Robbins, well within kicking distance. He's only 25 metres out, almost directly in front, and going for goal number two. Doesn't look that fit, though. It was a heavy knock he took there, but I must go back to Marsh. That was... Well done, very well done indeed by Marsh. Very courageous piece of play by Ian Marsh to get the ball to gain possession in the first place and then get the ball to Robbins. Though he'll have to be uh, right on target. It's his only a 30 metre kick that he has. And the kick from Robbins. No mistake at all. So Essendon now with a 13 point lead. And Essendon fans really happy at the, uh, the way their team are lining up right now as we see Robin. And Robbins and Madden. Robbins obviously got a heavy knock, but he's quite okay. Can the Hawks come back? There's plenty of time, of course. We've only been playing eight minutes in the final term. Here they come now. O'Halloran from 60 metres out goes goalward. It's on line. No, it's not. It's offline. A good kick, though, but just offline. Only one behind resulting. Oh, O'Halloran, who started the game in the full back position on Danaher and got a far of a hiding down there. Danaher kicked five goals on him in the first quarter, and uh, he was they have were well forced to shift him. Sure, puts the ball out wide to the halfback flank. Manane at the, at the back couldn't take the mark. It comes through to the Marsh. Marsh handballs across to Fletcher. Fletcher under a very different amount of pressure. Puts the ball up, but Payton's up high for Hawthorne. Takes the mark, plays on straight away. Swings it back towards centre half forward, looking down there for Hendry. Hendry copped the push in the back. Kick going against Folds. Umpire being right on, this, on the job there, having a perfect uh, view of it as he folds on the mark. And uh, Henry going for his fifth goal. And in position to kick it to only 50 metres out. The kick from John Henry. It's a beautiful looking kick, and it's hit the post. Well, the Essendon fans applauded that effort, of course. Good try by John Henry. The breeze getting that one. The breeze is, uh, would have been going across his kick there. So now we see the ball being driven in by Shaw to the outer side. It's dropping short. And the mark has been well taken by Hendry once again. But he's a little bit further out, so he wouldn't give him uh, as much chances as, he, as his last shot. The kick from Hendry, another nice kick down towards the 10-metre line. Keenan from behind, a lovely mark. Well, Keenan will be forced to go to the outer side. The breeze is blowing right across. Hello, oh, he's playing the dangerous football, coming in toward Hurd. It is dangerous football too. Goad nearly took that mark. But Hurd wins out. He can see a teammate all by himself up here on centre wing. And the mark taken by Alan Reid. He should go the short pass. He backs himself. He backed his judgment, gave it to Bennett. Back to Reid and Essendon come forward. And from the boot of Reid, who got flattened after he kicked. No free kick, but it's Robbins again. Can he pick it up cleanly? He tries to balk the opposition. 
A hurried kick goes straight up in the air. A chance for Van der Haar. Van der Haar, right, couldn't take the mark. It comes towards Madden. Madden close to the boundary line. Brings play back towards the position that's smothered off the boot. Taken by John Kennedy. Kennedy kick goes up towards the wing and Go takes the mark. He transfers play down towards the half forward line. A long kick. Tuck couldn't take possession of the ball. It comes off the boot of Tuck. Over the boundary line on the full. Unfortunate play for Tuck. And it'll be a free kick to Hawthorne. Taken by Mansfield. He tried to free run off. to Essendon. <laughs> to Essendon. Mansfield tried to run off but had to go back behind the mark. Now oh, he runs around uh, man, uh, Tuck and a good piece of play there. The left foot kick towards centre half forward but there's nobody home for the Essendon side and it's Don Scott who takes the mark. Scott's high kick down towards the centre wing. Knocked on but it's taken down there by... Look like Big Max Crow out toward Reed and Reed in the centre couldn't hold a difficult mark. It's on the turf. Coming through is Goad. A hand pass comes from Goad in the direction of O'Halloran. Can't gain possession. Hand pass comes out once again. And we see Reed take it away. Reed going for the short pass into Bennett. He can't accept it. Got a clip in the air for his troubles. Goad goes down, but it's been picked up by Wallace. Wallace going goalward. Three Hawthorne players down there. Neither take the mark. Moncrief goes for the left foot shot at goal. Matthews by himself can take the mark. And I thought, had he been facing goals, would have kept going. But he's going back now to take the shot for goal for his first if he gets it. And from only 10 to 12 metres out, Matthews shouldn't really have any trouble. We said that about Vanderhaar in the third quarter, and he missed the easiest of goals. Matthews goes on his way, puts it through, and Hawthorne get that much closer now to Westendon. There's only five points separating the sides at the 12-minute mark of the final term. Hawthorne, 14-10, 94. Essendon, 15-9-99. As I said, we've only played nine minutes after Lee Matthews got his first goal. That is the story on the scoreboard. Lee Matthews, a quiet player in the first quarter. Much more prominent, first half, much more prominent in this uh, second half. And his first goal bringing the Hawthorne within five points of Essendon once again. This is the board, 94-99 as it's bounced in the centre. It's Scott and Keenan. Scott wins out. His big knock, though, goes towards the folds. He couldn't take possession of the ball. Knocks it out as Scott comes down again. Strong play by the Hawthorne skipper as he handballs across to Henry. Henry turns around and puts the long kick down forward, but it's offline, and only one point results to make the margin now four points. Anybody's game here has been a very close contest all day. Shaw sure, putting it out to the outer side. Out toward Crow. Crow getting up to punch the ball further forward. That was good thinking. Good bit of work here by Marston. Going to lessen in a little bit of ground. Fletcher tried to tap it further forward. Couldn't do so. Vanderhaar picked up beautifully. His hand pass was intercepted. Another opportunity existing for Day. He put the ball forward, but it's all Hawthorne in defence. We see Rodney Ede take the mark on the half-back line for Hawthorne. Hawthorne's Day. Uh, Ede about to kick it in toward the centre. Yes, he favours the outer flank rear just a little bit. Up it goes and a good mark to Max Crow. Crow handballs out to Keenan. Keenan from almost in the centre of the ground. Robbins is there. It's over Robbins' head. Coming through is Mansfield. Mansfield throws the ball out in front of him, but uh, he's still under pressure, but it wins the ball well. Now the left foot kick from Mansfield's over. Everybody's head. It will depend on which way it bounces, but it's off line. And another point goes on the board to the Essendon side to take them to 15 goals, 10 a five-point margin over Hawthorne, 14 goals, 11. Short passes on from the full-back position, and Kennedy accepts it for Hawthorne. Goes to the outer side, looking for Wilton. Wilton with a break on Van der Haar, but the ball eludes him, and we'll see a boundary throw in take place on the outer wing position. 14 minutes into the quarter, Essendon lead by five points. They're on the 100-point mark, and the Hawthorne side on 95. Boundary throw in taking place. Van der Haar against Wilton. Wilton got the tap down, taken by Goss. He puts it on its way down toward Matthews, who got up high, and Lee Matthews takes a great mark for Hawthorne on the half-forward flank. Matthews goes for the short pass out of the pocket. Moncrief coming out. Couldn't trap the ball before the boundary line, and we'll see a throw-in take place in the forward pocket for the Hawks. Well, it's anybody's game here at Princess Park. Anybody's game. It's been a very close contest, as I said, all day. Quarter time, Hawthorne led by eight points. At half time, Essendon by one. And at the three-quarter change, we saw Hawthorne in front by six points, that is. And we see now out there, Goss trying to win possession of the ball. Still playing the ball in front of him. It was picked up and thrown forward by Muir. Matthews comes in. And Goss having a few words to umpire Marcy. But the result will be a bounce right near the boundary line. There's umpire Marcy putting it down in the forward pocket, tapped out by Payton. Goss being held, not in possession, and Peter Keenan giving away the free kick for 
uh, to Hawthorne's Goss, who goes for the short pass, and there's a mark to, oh, not a mark to Scott, he waited for it, instead of going in to meet it, but the umpire said it will be a free kick against Scott now, and Ken Fletcher taking the kick for Essendon. Fletcher from centre-half back, the long kick over the centre line, Van der Haar in the back position, and comes straight through, Hawker picks the ball up, gets it across to Van der Haar, and Van der Haar showing pace, great pace to have one bounce, and from centre-half forward, drives towards the big ones, and he's brought up his fourth goal. Great piece of work, Paul Van der Haar. Well, they've teamed well up there, in the, and they were in the forward area before, Danaher and Van der Haar. And uh, that was a nice piece of work by Van der Haar. He brings up, as Bob Skilton told you, his fourth goal, and uh, his co-forward in Terry Danaher has kicked seven. So between them, they've kicked 11 of the 16 goals that Essendon now enjoy. And Hawthorne will have to get a bit of a hurry on. They are down by 11 points. There we see Tim Watson warming up on the sidelines. Possibly a change will be made, but the whistle sounds and Hawthorne take a free kick from the centre bounce. Scott can drive Hawthorne forward. Don Scott favouring the drop punt. It's down over centre half forward. Moncrief comes out, is brushed out of the side too easily. It's the handball across from Foles to Fletcher. Fletcher's kick out towards Hurd, almost a one handed mark by Hurd. Trapped it well in recovering and now puts it up in the air, looking for Reed on the wing. It's Reed and Tuck. Neither player can take the mark, but it's Essen in the van through Bennett. Bennett goes for the short pass. Oh, oh dear one. me. Straight through the hands of, of Madden. Then Kelvin Moore is offloaded at the last moment. Hawker coming through. Runs straight past Kelvin Moore. Now Hawker puts the long kick. It's a beautiful kick down towards the forward zone. A great effort by Van der Haar to dive and try and get the mark, but he couldn't do so. And we see it go through for one point to the Dons to take them now to two straight goals. Well, we have a very big crowd in attendance and they appreciate the football they've been watching this afternoon. A hotly contested game. Not a great deal of, of uh, spite in it. It's been a good football lesson all day. In the front, the ball was punched away from Reed, but here's a chance for Kevin Ablett. Gets the uh, boot to ball very quickly. And now we see the chance for Essendon forward through Matthews. Can't pick up cleanly. The Essendon defence stand up. Hawthorne can't quite penetrate or get past that half forward line. Reed once again playing well, well for Essendon. Can see Bennett by himself in the centre of the ground. A short pass finds him and Bennett can see Heard. He kicks short up into the forward pocket area and a good mark to Bertie Di Pierdomenico. Gave it over to DeWald. No, it's not. It was Kennedy. The left foot down to Tuck. He has a chance to keep going, but he's caught. Pushed in the back. Free kick will go to Tuck. He's on the centre wing. Hawthorne desperately needing goals as they trail by two points. Handball across to DeWald. DeWald will put off on again to Wilton. And Wilton, still on the centre wing now, puts the long kick down towards the forward zone. Big pack of players up. Matthews trying to burst through. It's taken down there by Moncrief. He threw the ball out, according to the umpire, though. And it'll be sure the Essendon fullback to relieve the pressure. He goes for the short pass. Finds Mansfield. He'll draw play up and handball over the top. But it's a poor piece of play by Mansfield. He recovers well. He comes back towards Foles. He gets a push in the back from O'Halloran. And Gary Foles will take the result in free kick. Well, Essendon playing the dangerous game. They're bringing the ball onto the attacking side of the Prince's Park Oval. The breeze blowing across the ground and favouring the end from this position uh, to which Hawthorne is kicking. Tuck in front, spoiled by his own teammate and skipper in Scott, but it's Hawker again, going forward, looking for Terry Danaher, up high, can't hold it. A chance for Robbins, he goes down, can't quite get it out cleanly, eventually gets it out to Moore. It's kicked to the outer side, where Marsh has the chance. The ball running for him, oh, good piece of work here by Marsh, couldn't quite control it in the finish, but we'll see a free kick going to Ken Fletcher of Essendon. He's on centre wing, outer side. Fletcher goes for the short pass, again looking for Van der Haar. Van der Haar's built the mark, but recovered quickly, leaves the ball for Bennett. Bennett goes with a little short kick down towards the forward pocket. Day's there, tries to keep it in play, but it goes over the line before Day could get to it. And we'll see a free kick taken by John Kennedy of Hawthorne. We're approaching the 20-minute mark of the final term. Essendon holding on to a 12-point lead over Hawthorne. A high kick down there, looking for Hendry, but he couldn't take the mark. Van der Hur was there, was there as well. Knocked back by Bennett, diving in over the top, but was Madden. He gets it out to Van der Hur. Van der Hur hooks the handball back. Players overrunning the ball, and it's taken now by Tuck. Tuck's high kick down towards the forward line. He's looking for Matthews. Matthews has the ball punched away by Muir, but uh, it goes over the boundary line, and we'll see the throw-in take place on the centre wing uh, with the scoreboard there. 95 Essendon, 107... Um, 95 Hawthorne, 107 Essendon, a 12-point margin still favouring the Dons. And Fletcher picking up for Essendon to bring the ball back into attack. 
He's on the outer side looking for Van der Haar again. Van der Haar and Wilton do battle, but the boundary umpire indicates the throw and will take place on Essendon's half forward flank. We're on the outer side, some 85 to 90 metres out from Essendon's goal. So a bit of work to be done before Essendon can get a score, and for that matter, a lot of work to be done before Hawthorne can get a score. So the boundary throw in taking place. That's Van der Haar, but beaten, outpaced by Scott. The ball comes down to Wilton. He's kicked made to go over the boundary line. It goes very close. It's been picked up here by Marsh. He's kicked not a good one. It's well smothered, and we'll see another boundary. No, it's going to be a free kick going Hawthorne's way, and the player picking himself up off the ground will take it, and that player being Peter Menane. Menane on the outer half-back flank now, looking in toward the centre of the ground. Looks for a teammate. Can't find one. In front, Neil Danaher. Neil Danaher from the centre of the ground goes for the short pass. Hawker becoming a dangerous player in this quarter. Takes the mark, gets it across to Muir. Muir's kicked down towards the forward pocket, punched away by Kennedy. Coming down the ground was Watson. He ever runs the ball. DeWald coming in, just gets the handball up to Ede. Ede across to Moore. And from the centre half back position, Moore goes right in towards the centre of the ground. Henry's in the front, but it's punched away by Danaher. Well, two Essendon players spoil each other. Goss comes through, gets it across to Wallace. Wallace is kicked down towards the forward line. Crow coming out. The bounce plus in favour of Crow, and he's still there going after it. Traps the ball well. A good piece of play by Max Crow, and he now drives Essendon back up towards the centre line again. Knocked over by Scott uh, by Goss. Matthews is there for Hawthorne. It's not a, a good bounce for Matthews. Matthews tried to knock the ball out. Got the push in the back by, uh, from Hawker. And now Matthews with the free kick. Runs into the centre of the ground. Puts the long kick to centre half forward. Henry in the front position. Couldn't take the mark. It's grabbed by O'Halloran. Thought about handballing it. Now puts the kick down. But he's offline. Another point to O'Halloran. That's two points that uh, David O'Halloran has kicked in this quarter from direct shots. Well, O'Halloran must be lacking in confidence because he was on his kicking foot, Bob. Had, a, had the goals in front of him and was looking for a hand pass. I was surprised at that because he really was well within distance. He did eventually have the shot, which was off target, but he has reduced the lead now. That's Essendon on 107 and Hawthorne on 96. So the, that's the story on the scoreboard. There's plenty of football to be played out there. And the kick coming, and that could have been in the back. The umpire called play on. Crow went for the big punch. He's punched it right across the ground virtually. Muir caught in possession, and the whistle sounds from umpire Peter Cameron. There will be a bounce taking place on the half-forward line for Hawthorne, some 55 metres out from their goal. So a chance for Hawthorne from this bounce to take place. As I said, only one kick from goal. 50 to 55 metres out. A big pack around the ball. Be hard to get it away. It comes to turf. Tap down again. Folds goes in, tries to win possession. He got pushed in the back. Folds from centre half back he'll be taking plenty of time as the, as the clock ticks away the 23 minute mark of this final term Folds will go for the short pass Bennett's made position takes the easy, easy chest mark goes for the short pass again further around the wing and finds Reed. well lesson than playing the short game on the attacking side of the ground Reed looks for Robbins Robbins opposed to Reed and he takes the mark for Hawthorne on the half back position Rodney Eade Directs play across towards the centre, finds Wallace. Wallace, his kick down the wood, centre half forward. Payton's there, has the ball punched away. Hendry coming across, swings now on, on, back onto the left foot, goes for the short pass and finds Ian Payton. Payton at the true centre half forward position, 55 metres out from goal directly in front. So he'll be hoping to make the margin five points. And kick his first goal. If he does, he'll tighten the game right up. Payton being very deliberate. The kick, there's no mistaking that one, and the margin now between the two sides, only five points. Well, it's anybody's game still. We're at the 24-minute mark of the final term, only five points separating these two sides, Hawthorne and Essendon. Hawthorne with 15, 12, 102, and Essendon 16, 11, 107. You see that in front of you. So I reckon that we'd have about another six minutes to play. We're at 24 and a half minute mark now. And the longest quarter we've had was 32 and a half and coming back to 28 and a half the second. So the ball tapped down and it's Essendon through Mansfield going forward. Danaher there and Danaher takes the mark. He nearly gave, got a 15 metre penalty there, but Terry Danaher, who has kicked six goals, or is it seven? It's seven goals. Danaher going for his eighth goal. He was the Essendon hero in the first quarter, Bob, when he kicked five goals from the full forward position. And now we see him with a chance to bring up this goal and if he does kick it I think Hawthorne's task will be very difficult indeed we are at now the 25 minute mark of the quarter so from here we are into time on 
You'll excuse me if I wasn't quite with you there, Jack, because I was watching Don Scott back behind play, having words both to Graham Marcy and a few Essendon players. And like Scott, I thought he may have got a free kick for an infringement. Her took the mark and now misses it, brings up uh, one point. But I don't suppose Terry Danaher can expect uh, too much as he's now only kicked... Uh, uh, he's kicked seven goals too, which is not bad kicking. Well, Hawthorne can go into attack, yes. Henry taking the mark. John Henry's come back in form today. Hand passes to Kelvin Moore, put him in trouble, really. But more difficult uh, job that he had got out of it well. He looks for Goss, but Muir there had a good mark. Fine mark to Russell Muir, the back pocket player for Essendon. Muir in two minds as to where to go. The scoreboard showing only one straight kick between the teams. Muir finds Hawker on the half-back flank position. So Hawker will be forced to come up the member side of the ground, not forgetting that is the attacking side for Hawthorne. Scott up high, spoiled by Madden, the ball near the boundary line, tapped back by Ablett, and Terry uh, Danaher, Neil Danaher said thank you. Robin sees a lead, it's a short one, no mark taken, tapped over uh, by Fold, but straight to Tuck. Tuck gets a hand pass working, and through Wallace, Hawthorne go forward, O'Halloran takes it plays on quickly, he's wrong footed, he comes back to his left foot, goes the hand pass to Payton, finds Goss, Goss has given away the free kick, no, not paid, it's been forced out of the pack, DP in a minute goes there, but so is Muir, they have a bit of a wrestle, and the umpire said a bounce will take place. Bounce, take place on the Hawthorne's half forward line. Nearly 27 minutes gone, the final quarter, one goal between the teams, Essendon in front. Exactly, one straight kick, as Madden gets a knock, taken by Goss, Goss has kicked down towards the forward zone, Moncrief comes across, Moncrief and uh, sure it was, but it's uh, nobody home for Hawthorne as M Fletcher picks the ball up and drives it out towards the half forward flank where we see Manane and Marsh, two speedsters, kicked off the ground by Marsh. They both go on after it again. Marsh still in the, in the van. Ede comes across, takes the ball away. Ede gets a handball towards Wallace. Wallace back to Ede. Ede will give it over now to Tuck and Hawthorne going forward again. This time from the boot of Michael Tuck, the long kick down towards the forward zone. Peyton from behind and in front, Lee Matthews. Well, he could level the scores here. We're 27 and a half minutes into the quarter and Matthews the chance to kick his second goal and get the goal that levels the score. Matthews coming in from 15 metres out, puts it on its way and it's all clear, I think. Yes! Scores a level at Princess Park. Hawthorne playing Essendon and it's all tied on 16 goals, 12 each. Well, no need to say what a vital bounce we're going to have coming up. jostling for possession and position and the ball being put down by umpire Graham Marcy. Whoever gets it away from the centre line can win the game. It's Tuck, it's Reed. it's nobody getting it out cleanly and it will be a free kick going Essendon's way to be taken by Ken Mansfield. Mansfield playing on straight away, a little bit foolish in that case. Deep here to Menico with the ball, drives it back to centre half forward, it favours Henry, a good effort to trap the ball but it comes back to Fletcher. Fletcher gets it across to Crow. Crow showing tremendous pace, a beautiful kick by Crow, puts it right up could have possibly been a free kick, it'll be a point anyway, it's a score, and Essendon have hit the front. Danaher was appealing for a free kick, and really was dragged down by Kennedy. That's still a point though, Hawthorne are trailing by a point. Essendon still in attack, it's Reed a chance to mark, could have gone into it. A Mansfield back to Reed, from Reed back to uh, Shane Hurd, he drives into the full forward zone. Big man to Ha, can't take the mark. It's a chance now for a score, it's a goal I think, kicked by Robbins. Listen to the crowd. An elated Robbins, Jack. Well, what a great finish. It's what's been a great game. Stephen Robbins put in the forward zone in the final quarter. And listen, look at the fans. Listen to the crowd. It's been a great day. Can Essendon take it out or can Hawthorne come back? They have to pick up seven points. We're 29 and a half minutes into the final term. Scott and Madden. Madden gets a big punch. It's taken by O'Hallow and his quick kick's taken by Neil Danaher. Essendon going forward again. They're really hitting Hawthorne back with everything as it's punched away towards Watson. Watson runs around and he comes back towards centre half forward. Couldn't trap the balls. Picked up by Robbins again. Robbins across to Madden. Madden from centre half forward drives the long kick. He's offline, but it's another point. It's a score anyway. It's up in the Essendon forward line. And any chance of Hawthorne uh, winning this game now uh, quickly fading, Jack, because there's, uh, the clock ticks away. Right now it's a 30-minute mark. 30 minutes gone. The final quarter, of course. The game between Hawthorne and Essendon. And it's Hawthorne 
trying to get the ball away from the centre of the ground. It's been picked up by Herd of Essendon. He spins around, looks for Mansfield and finds Mansfield. It's at a centre-half forward, nearly a 15-metre penalty there too, but the umpire not paying it. But Mansfield has to kick in excess of 50 metres. The line you see there in your picture now at the Princess Park over is 59 metres from goal. He will be kicking from about 55 metres in going for his second goal. Ken Mansfield has the chance to increase Essendon's lead. Any score will do. He won't get a score. It wobbles from the boot. No mark will be paid to Watson. It's in there where Danaher tries to get it out and it will be a bounce. I think Essendon happy that the ball is uh, contained up there. There's the siren. Essendon running out winners. A great game of football here. This final scoreboard, Hawthorne 16-12, 108. Essendon 17-14, 116. And goal scorers for...